The head of NATO has called on Russia and Syria to halt what he's called their indiscriminate air attacks in Syria's Idlib province after 33 Turkish troops were killed on Thursday. Turkey says they were killed by a Syrian airstrike. It's responded with ground and air attacks on Syrian targets. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale reports. If you thought the war in Syria was coming to an end, think again. This was the scene this morning in Idlib province in the northwest of the country. Turkish forces bombarding Syrian government positions from the ground and from the air. This was retaliation by Turkey after 33 of its soldiers were killed in an airstrike, the largest death toll suffered by the Turkish military in a single attack since the 1990s. Turkey blamed the attack on Syria, even though Russian warplanes have been active in the region. Russia's defence minister claimed the Turkish troops were in the wrong area and had not informed them of their location, something Turkey denied. This attack was carried out even though the locations of our troops were previously coordinated with Russian troops on the ground. Idlib province is the last remaining stronghold of rebel forces, including some jihadi groups. And Turkey came to their aid after Syrian and Russian forces launched a new offensive in December. Almost a million people have left their homes, creating what the UN says could be the worst humanitarian crisis since the war began. The fear now is that the conflict could escalate, and this morning NATO ambassadors met and condemned the Syrian and Russian offensive. I call on them to stop their offensive, to respect international law, and to back UN efforts for a peaceful solution. The problem is that it's not the United Nations that holds the cards in this conflict, it's Russia. And in recent months, there have been growing tensions between Moscow and Ankara. This morning, President Putin and President Erdogan of Turkey, seen here last year, spoke on the phone in an attempt to calm the situation. But if there is no peaceful solution, then this could be a consequence. Refugees arriving on the Greek island of Lesbos this morning. There are already more than three million Syrian and other refugees in Turkey, and hundreds are now heading to the border with Greece and Bulgaria, after Turkish government officials suggested they may have to open the border if the fighting continues. James Landell, BBC News. Well, with me now is AJ Gyogsedev from the Turkish service. Uh, first, let's talk about Turkey's expectations. Turkey wants NATO backing here. Yes, Turkey wants a no-fly zone in over Idlib, and also Turkey wants its troops in Idlib to be protected by NATO. But uh, today there was a NATO meeting, uh, which was called by Turkey. But after the meeting, uh, Jens Stoltenberg made a statement, and uh, he didn't mention any no-fly zone or uh, any um, further protection. It's quite a big of... ask, isn't it? Yes, it is, actually. It is. Uh, but there was no fly zone um, mentioning by, by Stoltenberg. Also, Turkey wants more uh, airspace covering. Turkey has only one Patriot uh, missile now in Turkey, which was sent by Spain, uh, a NATO member, uh, two, three years ago. Uh, but Turkey needs more, and Turkey had more in 2011 and uh, 12 when the Syrian war started in the first years. But then NATO uh, withdrew all the other Patriot missiles from Turkey. Now, Turkey wants uh, more of it, it's only one uh, in Turkey, in Adana, in Jelik Air, uh, Air Base. Uh, Turkey wants more, but Stoltenberg said today only they were, that they were looking at uh, how they can further support uh, Turkey's airspace, but uh, there is no decision yet. Right, so there's a question mark there as far as Turkey is concerned. In the meantime, let's look at what's happening on the ground. I think we can show our viewers some live pictures as well uh, of, of what is happening in terms of refugees within Turkey. Mm -hmm. Are the borders being opened? Um, yesterday, a, um, an official, a Turkish official, anonymous Turkish official, spoke to um, Reuters news agency. He or she said uh, that they are not stopping anymore the refugees who want to cross uh, Europe. But today we saw um, some refugees, not necessarily all Syrians, uh, trying to cross Greek islands in the Aegean Sea. Uh, we saw them on the boats. We actually watched them live on TV channels, on Turkish TV channels, for hours since the morning. Uh, no one were, I mean, no, no police, no border police were stopping them. Also, we saw in Edirne, uh, Edirne border, which has border with Greece and um, Bulgaria, um, hundreds of refugees gathered in the border. They were trying to cross the border. But so far, this, uh, this border on, on the land has not been opened, but we see no, no uh, police stopping 
the refugees so far. And so as you say, not just Syrians. I mean, I was saying that there are Iranian, Iraqi, Afghan, Afghans. Pakistani refugees, and, and there's a lot of expectation building up, a lot of people on the move now. Yeah, and, and we don't know. There are actually conflicting reports uh, about the refugees. We don't know if they were sent by the officials to the border or, oh. or if they actually wanted to go to Europe because uh, they have a life in Turkey now because it has been years that they build up a new life. Uh, but we know if they try to go to Greece, Greek islands, uh, they will be stuck in these islands for months maybe. So we don't know what they're expecting. We don't know if they make any payments to go to the border or if they were sent by some officials. So we'll keep an eye on uh, this story. Yeah. Edgy, thank you very much for getting us up to date though on a very complicated story around Turkey right now. Thank you.